step into the intriguing world of Night Gallery, a captivating TV series from the late 60s that might have left a lasting impression on you. Imagine settling in for the first time, ready to experience the unique storytelling that mixes eerie tales with surprises. As you explore the episodes, keep an eye out for lesser-known facts or anecdotes that could amaze you. Have you come across any surprising tidbits about the show? Share your favorite memories or personal experiences in the comments below and connect with other enthusiasts. The journey through the stories is sure to spark conversation and laughter and maybe a shiver down your spine. So grab your popcorn, get comfortable, and let the tales unfold. Enjoy the show and share your thoughts. Night Gallery, a show from 1969, has a mix of good and not so good episodes. Some are really great, showing off the skills of the writers, directors, and actors. However, there are also quite a few boring episodes that bring down the overall quality. One issue is the inclusion of episodes that seem really silly and annoying. These episodes, often trying to be funny, make some people think that the person in charge, Jack Laird, didn't do a good job. It's strange because there are many talented people involved, but the show sometimes doesn't keep up a consistent level of quality. The show covers a lot of different themes and genres. The episodes like The Doll from 1971 stick with viewers because of the strong emotions and the fear they create. Some people still get scared by this episode even after a long time, saying it gave them nightmares and made them scared of dolls. Looking back, Night Gallery is an interesting old school show with some creepy episodes. It gives us a look at the creativity of the people who worked on it. The show isn't perfect but it has made a lasting impact on TV, showing us mysterious and spooky stories. Night Gallery, a series inspired by Rod Serling's desire to continue the success of The Twilight Zone, went through significant changes over its run. The syndicated version, which took scenes from the original hour-long format, created half-hour episodes, sometimes adjusting footage to fit the new time constraints. By the third season, Night Gallery took on a new format, focusing on a single story per episode, departing from its earlier practice of featuring two or three tales in one installment. Rod Serling conceived Night Gallery in 1964 after The Twilight Zone was cancelled, aiming to create a modern version of his previous groundbreaking work. Planning for this series began shortly after saying goodbye to The Twilight Zone, the appeal of Night Gallery lies in its diverse themes and genres featuring both standout and less impressive episodes. The varying quality has been a point of contention, with some attributing it to the oversight of Jack Laird, who was in charge. While the cast and crew were talented, maintaining a consistent level of excellence proved challenging. One standout episode is The Doll from 1971, known for stirring strong emotions and lingering fears. Even after some time, some viewers admit to having nightmares and developing a fear of dolls due to the lasting impact of this specific episode. Reflecting on Night Gallery reveals a nostalgic charm with a collection of creepy tales exploring the creativity of its contributors. Imperfect yet impactful, the series has left a lasting impression on television, offering audiences mysterious and spooky narratives. Night Gallery, a TV series stemming from Rod Serling's desire to replicate the Twilight Zone's success, faced budget constraints and tight shooting schedules. Director John Badham found himself in a situation where he had to reshoot scenes involving a rented horse and cart due to missed shots, prompting producer Jack Laird to reluctantly approve the additional expense. The unconventional nature of the show did not sit well with both Universal and the TV networks. The departure from the norm left executives unimpressed, contributing to a lack of enthusiasm for the series. Eventually, the show marked the end of Rod Serling's time as the host, closing a chapter in his career. Despite its challenges, the series underwent significant transformations over its run. The syndicated version reshaped hour-long episodes into half-hour formats, showcasing the show's adaptability. By the third season, it embraced a new format, featuring a single story per episode instead of multiple tales. The show's varying quality became a point of discussion, with some attributing it to the oversight of Jack Laird. While the cast and crew displayed talent, maintaining a consistent level of excellence proved challenging, resulting in both standout and less impressive episodes. One notable episode, The Doll from 1971, stands out for its ability to evoke strong emotions and lingering fears. Viewers, even after some time, confessed to having nightmares and developing a fear of dolls due to the lasting impact of this specific installment. 
In reflection, the series offers a glimpse into the creative minds behind its eerie tales despite its imperfections. The show, imperfect yet impactful, has left a lasting imprint on television, contributing mysterious and spooky narratives to the medium. In the late 60s television scene, a unique series emerged Night Gallery. It had a mix of eerie tales and surprises. Interestingly, a year before Kung Fu debuted, David Carradine and Ray Dames Pira, who played different ages of Kwai Chang Kane in Kung Fu, appeared in Night Gallery. Carradine featured in The Phantom Farmhouse, and Pira took on a role in Silent Snow, Secret Snow. Rod Serling, the creative force behind Night Gallery, used a set adorned with paintings and sculptures to introduce each story. What stood out was that only paintings were used to visually represent a story's title, adding a unique visual dimension. Even when producer Jack Laird took a more significant role in the final season, Serling continued to submit scripts and ideas, maintaining a connection with the show. Night Gallery underwent changes, reflecting the challenges faced by the production. The syndicated version transformed hour-long episodes into half-hour formats, showcasing adaptability. By the third season, the format shifted to single-story episodes, moving away from the initial practice of featuring multiple tales. These changes aimed to keep viewers engaged, illustrating the series' ability to evolve. Despite its imperfections and varying episode quality, Night Gallery's impact is clear. The series not only provided a creative outlet for talented individuals, but also left a lasting impression on television. The episodes, with their diverse themes and genres, connect with audiences, creating lasting memories and, in some cases, lingering fears. Night Gallery, imperfect yet impactful, shows the creativity of its contributors and the lasting appeal of mysterious and spooky narratives on the small screen. Enjoy the tales and share your thoughts. Night Gallery emerged in the late 60s, showcasing directorial talents, including two segments by Steven Spielberg and possibly a third. The 1971 vignette, a matter of semantics, remains shrouded in uncertainty, with conflicting memories about Spielberg's involvement. Despite objections from Rod Serling, the second season saw the controversial addition of brief blackout comedy sketches between main segments, sparking ongoing debates among fans. Sculptors Logan Elston and Phil Vanderlei took charge of all sculptures in the series, contributing to the visual elements that added depth to storytelling. Initially, Rod Serling pitched the concept of a wax museum curator introducing stories via exhibits. However, network disinterest prompted Serling to tweak the pitch, leading to the distinctive format adopted by the show. The show's eclectic nature faced challenges, with Jack Laird's oversight being scrutinized. The introduction of comedic elements and varying episode quality created a divide among viewers. Sculptures, a constant visual motif, were crafted by Elston and Vanderlei, contributing to the overall aesthetic. Reflecting Serling's desire to continue the success of The Twilight Zone, the show underwent transformations, switching to single-story episodes by the third season. Despite imperfections and debates over episode quality, one standout installment, The Doll from 1971, continues to evoke strong emotions and lingering fears, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. Night Gallery's endurance lies in its ability to adapt and evolve, showcasing the creativity of its contributors. The show's influence on television, marked by eerie tales and visual storytelling, persists as a reflection of Serling's vision. Enjoy the tales and share your thoughts on this journey through mysterious and spooky narratives.